You are now listening to Vibe Selection with Kyra, where you can get the real on today's hot topics. Well, welcome everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Vibe Selection. I am your host, Kyra, and on today's episode, I have renowned psychic medium and author June Edwards joining me today, who has over 27 years experience connecting others with their loved ones on family, friends, and loved ones on the other side after her own near-death experience. And she's also authored books titled All's Fear and Love and Karma, Dancing with the Universe, and the Destiny Card Journal, as well as Night on the Other Side. So I want to transition over to a topic that's a little bit more lighter. (laughs) I want to talk about relationships. So why do you feel like so many people find it hard to find their ideal partner in life? And why is dating so hard for people nowadays? So the book that's behind me that I wrote, All's Fair in Love and Karma, is a result of the Relationship Mastery Program that I created. And I created that program for people that kept coming to me with problems like you're just asking me, okay? And what I learned is that there are five lessons that we have to learn for our soul. So um, the universe wants you to think you have choice. So the universe is going to give you do a one, two, and three. Most people are going to take door one, go through it, get married, have a couple of kids, get divorced. They're going to be in front of door one, two, and three again. People are creatures of habit. What are they going to do? Take door one again. They're going to go through it, get married, have a couple more kids, get divorced, be in back of door one, two, three again. If you learn the lesson you're supposed to learn, you're not going to take door one anymore. You're going to take door two or door three. You may still get married and have more children, but it's not going to end in divorce the way the first two did because you learned the lesson. Mm -hmm. And until you learn the lesson, you're going to keep repeating the same relationship issues again over and over. So let me tell you what the five lessons are, and then we can go a little bit deeper into the why. Okay. (laughs) So we talked about the first one already, money and balance. Okay. Then you have Mm self-worth. Self-worth is the understanding. It's not value because value is what other people place on you. Self-worth is the understanding that you are so important. You are the only one of you here. The universe felt that we needed you. So you have an important job here. And it's understanding that it's not selfish or narcissistic to put yourself first. It's where everything else comes from. If you cannot put yourself first, you're not going to be here to take care of anybody else, are you? That simple. And it's also understanding that no one has power over you. I can't make you love me. I can't make you hate me. That's all on you. I also can't make you happy. You are the only person that can make yourself happy. And when you do that, that happiness will ping pong off of everyone else. Mm -hmm. The next lesson is trust and communication. And you have to first trust that there is a higher power and that there is a plan and that you made that plan. So everything that's happening to you is happening for your highest and best. Even though you can't see it now, hindsight's a wonderful thing. You can Mm -hmm. look back and see how everything in your life has brought you to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and brought you to where you are right now. And you are always exactly where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You can't really delay it. The only thing you can really delay are your lessons in life. You can delay those to your next lifetime if you want. Be that stubborn and you don't want to learn them. Um, But you also have to be able to communicate your wants and needs to the people in your life. And whether it's your family, your friends, your employer, um, your significant other, you have to be able to tell them your wants and your needs. They don't automatically know. And then sex is just another form of communication. If you can't trust and communicate outside the bedroom, you're never going to be able to trust and communicate inside the bedroom. Mm-hmm. Then you have unconditional love. Unconditional love is not playing the martyr and saying, oh, I have to stay with him even though he's abusive because I'm practicing unconditional love. Mm-hmm. That's not what unconditional love is. Mm-hmm. This brings back the lesson of self-worth because all the lessons keep reinforcing each other. Mm-hmm. It's saying, listen, I love you. I care about you. I want the best for you. Mm-hmm. But this is not working anymore. We had a good run. It's time to go our separate ways. It's not bad mouthing them as soon as you turn around and get down the block. It's Honestly, wanting the best for everyone that's in your life, even if they can't be in your life. Okay. Suppose you had a child that you loved dearly and they did something horrific like murdering a neighbor in a fit of rage and they end up going to prison the rest of their life. 
You don't like what your child did, but hopefully you still love your child, right? That's unconditional love. Mm -hmm. Then you have, um, then you have uh, the last le lesson, which is patience. And patience is a big one because now we live in a world of instant gratification, right? Everybody wants everything now. Mm -hmm. Well, how foolish would that be if every five-year-old little girl that wants to be a mommy and have babies ends up having the stork deliver them to the front door, right? Yeah. It's terrible. A little untimely, don't you think? <laughs> Very. <Yeah. laughs> Everything happens at the perfect time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe you're 32, 33, and you're like, oh, my biological clock is ticking. I want to get married and have babies. Well, if you don't have them now, it's because you didn't put them into your plan yet. Maybe you put them in your plan when you're 50 and you marry a widow and raise his children. Who knows? You know, if you knew everything that was going to happen in your life all the time, you don't, wouldn't get out of bed every day, would you? Because you already know. Right. So you have to learn how to live every day enjoyably, be appreciative of what's brought to you, understand how the universe works because everything you want will be brought to you. The mm -hmm. universe wants you to live in abundance. They want you to have everything that you ever asked for, and they will bring it to you if you trust and you have patience. It will come. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And that's something that is very hard for me to do is have patience because mm -hmm. I am the type of person I want that instant gratification sometimes. And majority of my life, I've been single and I'm someone who has not witnessed a lot of healthy relationships in my life. So I do feel like there's an aspect of me you know, writing into my own life plan to have relationships later in my life. But I've also learned so much about myself. Part of my issues and why I've delayed having a man in my life is because of my abandonment issues with my father and a lot of the women in my family in our generational line, not having healthy relationships with men, getting in relationships with men and being so codependent on them financially, because let's face it, that's how our society has been set up for so long. As a woman, you are taught to stay behind your man and listen and obey them and a lot of times you know as women have well most of us women have realized that that has not been healthy for us there needs to be a balance between both sexes well there's no self-worth at that point is there right. No, not at all. Okay. So again, that's one of the biggest lessons we all have to learn is self-worth. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. My father telling me point blank, you're a female. You should have been born a male. You know, when I was successful in business, look at you. You should have been a man. No, dad, I shouldn't have been. I'm a female. I'm a successful female. And I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and growing up being told, <laughs> you, you know, you, you're worthless. You know, your only, your only value is to have sex and babies. That's your value in life because you're a female. That's that's just so misogynist. It's ridiculous. But, you know, again, my lesson to overcome that self-worth. Right. Mm -hmm. And learn money and balance. I mean, I've had nothing in my life. I grew up with nothing. And I was one of those people that was so out of balance. I was working seven days a week, 16 hour days, totally out of balance. Mm -hmm. You have to learn the universe will always take care of you. Even the beggar on the street that chose that life. If he wants a warm bed and a meal, all he's got to do is ask and it will be presented to him and he just has to go. There right. is self-responsibility here. You can't say, oh, I want to meet the perfect guy. I want to meet the perfect guy and you never get off your couch. Right. It's not going to be the UPS guy and the, and the, and the mailman, I promise you. Okay. Right. <laughs> he's not so, going to be on a horse, you know, galloping yeah. to your front door. <laughs> no. So the, the few things that you can do for your um, self-responsibility, the first one is to meditate. Because mm -hmm. when you meditate, you're raising your vibration. Mm -hmm. And we're, we are magnets. We're always either attracting or repelling at any given time. That's what we're doing with our energy. Mm -hmm. And we're like a radio station. You can't get the radio station in unless you're on the right frequency, right? Right. So if you want to bring better into your life, you have to raise your vibration. Because mm -hmm. if you're on a low vibration already, you're just going to bring people that are on a low vibration into your life. Mm -hmm. So if you raise your vibration, you'll be on the frequency to bring people that are on a higher frequency into your life as well. People that are happier, people that are well connected to the to the other side, to their soul. And when you do that... Excuse me. When you do that and you learn how the universe works, you can have anything you want in your life. You know, when you pray, you ask the universe. When you meditate, you get your answers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you ask, I could tell you story after story of stuff. Oh, my God. When COVID hit, I decided it was time to get a new car. Mm -hmm. My car was a 2015 diesel BMW. 
And COVID hit in 2020. Mm -hmm. The last year they made them was 2018. Mm. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to buy a used one, right? So I'm looking for used ones, and they're like, I think they were... $40,000 $40,000 with 30,000 miles on them, okay? And ugly colors, ugly, ugly. So I'm putting up to the universe, gee, you know, this stinks that I can't get a new one. I really wish I could get a new one. That I wish I could get one like I used to have with the midnight blue and the saddle brown interior. It was such a pretty car. Don't you know within three hours I get an email? I didn't email anybody. I'm just looking on the classified ads, Right. Within three hours, I get an email from a dealership in Rockland, Maryland. They have a brand spanking new 2018 on the showroom floor, leftover, no miles, full warranty, same money as a used one with 30,000 miles on it. I'm like, meant to be. obviously, this is supposed to be my car. <laughs> the universe has just brought exactly what I asked, exactly what I asked to the T, right? Mm-hmm. I go to apply for it. Now I lost everything after my second marriage. I lost my businesses. I went bankrupt. I lost everything with my second second divorce. Mm-hmm. And um, so I applied for it and I got denied the loan. I'm like, well, universe, you're going to have to figure out how I'm going to pay for this car because I could not get the loan for it. and I, don't, I can't afford it. And mm-hmm. sure enough, by the end of that week, I had put enough people in my program to buy the car cash and have it delivered. Wow, amazing. This is how the universe works. Law of attraction. Mm -hmm. So, and again, because everything has to stay in balance, if you raise your vibration and the law of attraction starts bringing you everything and you don't balance your energy, you'll crash and you'll lose it. And Mm -hmm. this is what happens to people. You have to balance your energy out. Mm -hmm. So the highs aren't so high, the lows aren't so low, but you're in that stream constantly because money is energy and it flows like a river. That's what it does. The more you put out, the more it comes back. It just goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's energy. Absolutely. And one thing that I've uh, noticed a lot and I've experienced from some people that I've known that have been in relationships is a lot of times they become super complacent. They know that a relationship is not really growing them, excelling them or anything like that. And because they're so comfortable in their circumstances, they'll they will stay. They don't want to be there, but they'll be there and they'll make all of these excuses for why they can't get out. What are your thoughts about this? So. When you get stuck in life because you're stubborn or lazy or whatever it is or complacent, the universe is going to step in and push you along, whether you like it or not. So (laughs) either Prince Charming is going to walk in your life or the one you're with is going to find somebody else that he likes and walk out of your life. But something's going to happen. Or maybe the house burns down and you both have to go live in separate places and that causes the separation. Something will happen to move you along if you can't do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. And you may not like that. It might be a lot easier for you to make the decision for yourself. Because when the universe steps in, it's usually a little more more extreme. Mm -hmm. And you may not like what the universe does to you sometimes. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Um, You know, I've seen people's houses burn to the ground because, you know, they can't make the decision to sell the house and move to a job offer that they've had that they keep getting that's so much better for their life. And so something happens and sure enough, the house burns down. Well, I guess we got no choice. Now we got to move somewhere. We might as well go there. Right. And in life is all about progressing. You know, you have sometimes different mates in this life. You're not always going to have the same partner, you know. So there's three different types of relationships. There is the karmic relationship, and that is specifically someone that either you owe karma to or they owe you, and you're only there to learn or teach a lesson, one of the five lessons. Mm -hmm. And a karmic relationship never feels 100% comfortable. You're always looking for the red flags looking over your shoulder, waiting for the shoe to drop. It never really feels right. Mm -hmm. And when one or the other of you learns the lesson that you're there to learn, it ends immediately. It's like you wake up one morning, whether it's a partner, whether it's a friend, why do I even have this person in my life anymore? I'm done. Mm -hmm. Now, if you both learn the lesson, it will end amicably. If only one or the other has learned their lesson, it will end, but it's not going to be amicable. Mm -hmm. Then you have the soulmate relationship. Now, a soulmate relationship is the same as a karmic. It's there to teach you or to learn something, but it's also there to afford you some love and comfort along the way. Mm 
So a soulmate relationship feels really good, okay? It offers you a lot of love and comfort. They can last a long time. They can last a short time. It depends on what you wrote into your life plan. But once you've learned your lesson with them, they don't have to end. They can continue and you can learn more lessons with them. It really depends on what you wrote into your life plan. Mm-hmm. And then there's a twin flame relationship, which is extremely rare. There is way too much misinformation about them on the Internet because of the movies and things that came out. Everyone does not have a twin flame. It is not a, this romantic relationship that they depict in the secret. A twin flame is literally one soul that splits into two bodies before it reincarnates. Mm-hmm. And they will continue to stay as two separate souls forever reincarnating in two separate bodies and they're always a a romantic relationship that's the only thing that is accurate they're extremely sexual extremely passionate extremely possessed you know almost like to the point of possession because it's like you finally met your other half literally it's the old this person completes me is the term for that Mm -hmm. and they only last for a matter of a few weeks to a few months that's it and when they split it's like you're ghosted Mm -hmm. and they come into your life at a specific point in time that you pre-planned to literally blow up your life and put you on the path that you're supposed to be on for both of you and when you separate like I said it's like you were ghosted there's really no connection there while you're doing your work and the point of a twin flame relationship is not only to learn the five lessons but to help humanity they have to be on a life path of helping humanity Mm -hmm. and if they're both able to learn their lessons and get on their life path then they will have an opportunity to reconcile and get back together again in this lifetime otherwise they won't they'll have to wait till they get to the other side again Mm -hmm. so most twin flames do not get back together in this lifetime Mm -hmm. So ghosting, this is something that seems to happen a lot in the dating scene. What are your thoughts about the whole ghosting thing? Why do these guys and women ghost people? Do you feel like they just are not having the innate ability to let you know up front why they don't feel like they may have a connection with you? or Well, because they have not learned enough of their lessons to be able to have common courtesy. Trust and communication is a big one. You have mm-hmm. to be able to trust that when you communicate what it is you need to communicate, it's going to be important and it's going to be received properly. Mm -hmm. Um, I have never ghosted anyone. I have been ghosted many times because I am single. Mm -hmm. Um, But I have never done that to someone else, even if I make up an excuse as to why I don't want to see them anymore to let them down easy so that they don't think it's them. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'll always let them know, listen, it's just for me, it's just not working. Don't just ghost them. That's, you know, that's it's it's lack of communication. It's um, some of the instant gratification stuff in there that they, you know, they don't want to deal with it. So I'll just, you know, I want to be I want to have it over now. So I just won't even go through that point. It's almost like, you know, I listened to the second date update on one of the radio stations down here in Florida. And there was one the other day that was really good because their first date, she actually had the guy go to her house and they ordered pizzas and watched a movie for a first date. Mm -hmm. Well, you've skipped the whole courtship at that point. (laughs) Right. Yeah. How awkward is that? You know, she's into the movie. He's not. He's asking her questions. You know, he won't call her back or talk to her again. And she can't understand why. And he's like, I don't want to sit home and watch a movie. I wanted to get to know you. Right. This is the whole point of a courtship, getting to know you. But a lot of people are skipping over too many steps. <laughs> right. I absolutely agree. It's like nowadays people just want to hook up. I feel like we're in a big culture of just hookup culture. Anything kind of goes. And I'm someone where I believe you should get to know the person before you start getting intimate with them because you also build, you know, uh, sexual bonds with these people. And well, you the exchange of energy, what people don't understand is you're taking on on the energy of the other person when you're that intimate it's an exchange of energy on top of everything else bodily fluids and it's an exchange of energy Mm -hmm. and do you really want somebody's low ass vibes and you're you know (laughs) (laughs) i love the way you put that because people don't really think about it like that 
You yeah. know, that tra- person may be very attractive, but they be- may be very low vib- vibrational. Yeah, they may be a narcissist. Yeah. You don't need that. Yeah, you don't need somebody bringing you down. Right. So, yeah, you need to really take the time to get to know somebody. But, you, again, if you raise your vibration, you're more apt to bring people that are in on that same frequency is you and the other ones will drop off when you raise your vibration you'll notice that anyone that's around you that is not of that vibration will just disappear including your friends sometimes it's lonely because you'll lose all your friends because you're going to be bringing new ones in you have to have a void for the universe to fill it right absolutely (laughs) (laughs) and do you feel like people can have really successful marriages and relationships and healthy ones so even if they may come from an abusive past because a lot of times when yeah, <laughs> because a lot of times I've seen people be in abusive relationships with someone and then sometimes they get into another relationship with another person, a new mate, and they bring along some of that residual trauma from their past relationships. But they're doing that because they haven't learned their lesson. Right. What was their lesson? Was it self-worth? They mm-hmm. allowed the other person to verbally and mentally abuse them. So they're going to allow the next one to do it. Mm-hmm. So, again, you're going to keep repeating every relationship until you learn the lesson. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is some, you know, a lot of guys will pick someone that's exactly the same as the other person, just different hair color or different eye color, or maybe she's a little Mm -hmm. taller and he won't even see it. But the friends will be like, what are you doing with her? She's just like your ex-wife. What are you talking about? She's nothing like my ex-wife. Yeah, she's exactly like your ex-wife. And sure enough, he's just repeating because he didn't learn whatever the lesson was he was supposed to be learning in the last relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, you know, my, my program, the relationship mastery program, I put hundreds and hundreds of people through that program, but I only work with one person. Mm-hmm. If you're in a marriage that's having problems, I don't work with couples. That's that's not, you know, that never works. It's he said, she said, and all it is is a fight. I work right. with one person, and I teach them how to get in touch with their soul, how to raise their energetic vibration, and how to work with the universe. And when I do that, everything in their life, everything in the relationship changes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Because for every action, there's an equal or greater reaction. When you do something differently, they're going to do something differently. It's Mm -hmm. just amazing. It's like a dance. And when you start raising your vibration and understanding why things are happening in your relationship, you really start to look at it from a higher perspective and you don't get triggered by things anymore. And you Mm -hmm. learn how to also not trigger the other person. Right. I love that. So what are some of the what is the first step? to getting on that path and booking a session with you in order to change this whole dynamic. So there is a free webinar on my website, juneedward.com. There's no S in there, juneedward.com. And they can sign up for the free webinar to learn how energy works and see if they are a good candidate for the Relationship Mastery Program. So remember, everything's a relationship. We're having a relationship here right now, just in this discussion. You're in a relationship with your family, your friends, your employer. Um, a lot of people take my program just because they want to have a better relationship with their business. They're business people. They want to change their energy and attract more clients. They want to be able to change their energy and have better employees. All of those things. It's all, that's what it encompasses, all of that. So when you do the program, it doesn't just fix your relationship. It changes your entire life. Mm -hmm. I've had people that find me. I have one guy who was just out of prison. Great family guy, uh, family business that he'd been in for years and got into some trouble when COVID hit. Actually, it was right before COVID and uh, got into some trouble and had sold off cattle that uh, was not his that was on the on the land. And, you know, if you're out west and you're selling somebody's cattle, you know, they used to hang you back in the day for that. Mm -hmm. And he went to prison for six months for it. And when he was in prison, his wife divorced him. His kids wouldn't talk to him. It's a small town. He lost all of his friends. He came out and was ready to commit suicide when I popped up on his computer. And that's what usually happens. I just pop up to the people that need me. (laughs) Hello. Exactly. (laughs) And he went through the program and his life changed so much that within a year, he had written, he wrote a book about his experience in prison. All of his friends came back. He paid back everybody. 
Mm. In, the, in the small town and he rallied around him and understood that it could have been them that had hard times. His family came back, his kids came back, um, and he started dating his wife finally. <laughs> he opened a business. Yeah. He always wanted to, you know, be in the, he always wanted to get out of the business he was in because it was a family business. He grew up in it. So he started a food truck first, a barbecue truck, and then he opened a restaurant. Mm-hmm. So he's got both of those things going on. And so we see right there, he's a living testament that people can change only if they want to change, though. Everything in life, you have to want to do it. You know, you got to want to get up off the couch. You got to want to get out of bed every morning. It's all, you know, the self-responsibility built into everything. If you want the reward, you have to do the work. It's that simple. The the universe is not going to reward you unless you do the work. Right. And so often I see people have a victim mentality. They can articulate to you a lot of times why they have so much trauma or troubles in their life. But yet a lot of times they just, like I said, are so complacent. They don't really care. And they continue even sometimes to be the abusers. They may have been abused as a child and they become the perpetrators in their relationships because that's all that they've ever seen. So that's the reason that I wrote my autobiography, because I've had a very, very traumatic life. And I think that's why I wrote the out into my life when I was 27, if I needed to leave. And I've had many people come to me. You don't know what I've been through. You this, you that. I said, you know what? There's not much I haven't been through in my life that you haven't been through. So sing me the song. Here's the little violin playing for you, you know? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Your tiny tiny violin. (laughs) Exactly. You can sit here and play the victim all you want, and you can get your ass up and pull your bootstraps up, and you can move on, and you can have an absolutely amazing life. Mm -hmm. It's all on you. And, you know, I feel bad because, you know, I'm one of eight children, and out of eight kids— There's only three of us that have ever made anything out of our lives. You know, two of them have passed. Um, The the other ones have, a couple of them have mental illness, alcohol or drugs. And yeah, they they choose to play the victim and fall into that instead of changing their life and pulling themselves out of it. That's really your choice. So again, they're just delaying their lessons that they needed to learn to the next lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. Well, June, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Vibe Selection Podcast. Please let everyone know where they can get your books and how they can connect with you. My books are available everywhere, but there are easy links on my website, juneedward.com. There are links to all the social media, except for TikTok. I am not on TikTok. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, um, X, Trump, all those uh, let's say there are videos of all my students and uh, different podcasts on my website as well. And again, you can sign up for the free webinar to see how energy works. You can make appointments with me for readings, mediumship, angel card readings, astrology, numerology. I do cards of the Magi. I do Akashic records, which are your past life. I can do all kinds of things for you. So the jack of all. Pretty much. (laughs) Actually, King of Diamonds. I'm a King of Diamonds. Ah, I like that. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Vibe Selection. As you already know, I am your host, Kyra. Stay tuned for next week's episode. Stay safe. Stay healthy out there. All right. Bye. Thank you for joining Vibe Selection with Kyra. Come vibe out with us again next time and hear the latest on today's hot topics. Find us on Instagram at I am Kyra Mahoney or donate at www.patreon.com slash vibe selection.